Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to grow watermelon in hydroponic outdoor. So I have this 20 gallons tote here that we're going to use. And then I have these sugar babies here. Um, I'm gonna divide them out, move the rest of the soil, and one is going to be in our hydroponic system. We're going to use the Maxi Grow series and I have my net cup ready. So let's go ahead and separate the plants and then we are going to put them to hydroponic. Okay, first we are going to separate this. Actually, these are Jubilee, sorry, not sugar babies. I, thought, I forgot, I thought I bought some sugar babies. But uh, anyway, so uh, there are four of them in here. And so we are going to try our best not to damage the roots and divide them up. There we go, so we got one for our hydroponic system. So let's clean it up really well. Okay, so that should be good. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we are going to use a one inch net cup here and also the rock wool that go with that. And so we're gonna cut this down the middle. And then we're going to put the plant in like this. Roots underneath. And then at the bottom of the net cup, you see, I, I cut the net cups in half. So that's easy to uh, put the roots through like that. And so here we have it like that. And it's going to go right here. Okay, so the uh, Maxi Grow. It says one to two teaspoon per gallon of fresh water. I'm just gonna go with one teaspoon per gallon. So this is a 20 gallon, so it's gonna be 20 teaspoons. And it does come with the teaspoon measure. So you measure 20. I might even go less because I may have to change the water out in a few weeks. So uh, I could go, you know, 10 to 15. Uh, that should be good to go. Move this over. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add the nutrients. I think I'm going to go with 15. Okay, so I just made a scoop. It, it's usually not the exact uh, one teaspoon, but uh, that should give you the idea. Okay, so now I'm going to spray my water in here. That way the nutrients can dissolve evenly. Okay, so another reason why I didn't go with the exact amount is that because we're keeping this outdoor, uh, there could be rain. And so when the rain comes and it, it may d dilute everything, so I might have to pour it out and then, you know, kind of add a little bit back. So um, it's not going to be the exact amount, but that's just, uh, we're just going to go with that. So let me fill this up and I'll show you. <laughs> okay, the water is filled to the point that I need it. And uh, you see the roots is touching the level right there. You don't have to go all the way up into the net cup, but as the, the roots are pretty nice and established. And so as long as it, a lot of part of it is touching the water, that should be good enough. And then those empty holes, I'm going to cover it up with this. And that should be it. So uh, we will check back in a week or so and see what happens. <laughs> okay, here is the watermelon four days later. So after the, uh, the first day, the plant struggled like crazy. So I wanted to show you the process and it dried up. You see the, the leaves are dried on, on both sides right here. These are the colleen. And um, that's usually very typical because we just disturb the plant by taking it out of soil, rinse the roots. So the roots are like having to get adjusted and everything like that. And so uh, also it's sitting right here where the sun is and uh, it is going to be a huge shock for the plant. And so, uh, yeah, it's starting to, to come back now. And so we all set. So let's take a look at the roots and see. 
see there it is right there it's still doing pretty well and so uh we'll check back very soon okay it has been exactly 23 days now and the plant is making progress i really thought that this was gonna die because it went through such a crazy um transplant shock but uh, it made it back look, look at this here you see the leaves were burned from the sun uh, the transplant was uh, was really rough on it but it made a comeback and after 23 days it's actually grown pretty well and so today we are going to switch out the nutrients and the, the reason for that is because we had such a crazy amount of rain over the past few weeks and it just diluted this entire um you know uh reservoir and so uh everything is just pretty much um out of balance now and diluted and all that stuff so uh, uh, we are going to dump this out put back new nutrients and then the plant should grow well look at the root system right there it's nice and white now and that is a good sign so uh, I'm gonna dump this out and then I add back the the new fresh batch of nutrients and then we'll wait and see how well it will grow okay I dumped out all of the nutrients and I added new ones right here that is the uh, the same nutrients that we added in the beginning so now I'm using one teaspoon per gallon so this is a 20 gallon so I used 20 teaspoons and so I added the uh, the powder first and then we use the water spray to try to dissolve everything okay so let me mix it up and then we'll add the plant back <laughs> okay we added everything back so now there is the new nutrients with the plant in it and that is around the perfect amount of water and everything diluted pretty well when you add the powder first and then spray into it it uh, it works very well to mix everything up and for uh, 23 days it actually grew pretty slow but considering I didn't do anything at all it's just basically I, I set it there and I forgot about it until 23 days later so I'm gonna do that again I'm just gonna let it sit there 23 days later and check on it or however many days that it's gonna take for the plants uh, the plant to grow and if it rains I may have to dump out some water so um, we'll check back soon okay today we are on day number 40 and the plant is starting to put out flowers uh, there's no female flowers yet just the male flowers so uh, that should come pretty soon but today I'm going to uh, add some bloom to the reservoir but also I want to show you something that I've done additionally so every time I change uh, or not that one time or every time I add nutrients um, without anything there's always a film at the top and it wasn't it made the uh, nutrients not very clear and so what I did was I added an air stone and so here is my solar air stone and as soon as I add that it started to bubble and within the reservoir it clears things up right away so it works wonder and so right now it's sitting right there uh, without the Sun on it but let me show you how it works so I'm gonna move this into the Sun right there and then check that out see it's starting to bubble right there see let me move it closer because it's hard to see you see that it started to create bubbles and so that helped tremendously and so uh, also it helped because uh, when the rain water gets in there uh, instead of the plants being drowned it has air being fed to it from the solar um, air pump right here and it's uh, it changed everything so uh, it's pretty cool so anyway uh, today we are going to add about um, a few gallons of water and uh, and I'm adding bloom to it so that it can help with the the flowering process so I'm gonna mix it in in the one container and then I'm gonna just pour it in there so I'm using a one gallon right here and I'm getting the the, the the five milliliter scoops I'm doing five of those uh, just to start so that's 25 milliliters the little 
five milliliter scoops and so I will be adding it to this so all I do is I just add five of those scoops in here pour water in there shake it up really well and then I'm just gonna pour it all into there okay so uh, that's what I'm doing today so we will be back soon all right guys today we are on day number 56 and the watermelon is just doing amazing so I recently went out of town for five days and man good thing I did is I fill up the bucket before I left because when I came back it was almost way down to the bottom the reason for that is the heat has been ridiculously here in Texas it's exceeding a hundred degrees Fahrenheit so the the evaporation is just really really crazy and also these plants are just grown so much you see I didn't have a chance to trim these guys and now I don't have the heart to trim them so I just let them grow wild this is from one plant guys all these are just side shoots and they're just grown everywhere and now we have fruits and so look at that see that is a watermelon so they're all, they're everywhere we um i think we have like a four or five of them and so i'm going to have to uh thin them out because if there are too many uh the watermelon will not be very big but also i need to protect these because i have a rabbit that has been running around here and it could be or it potentially could eat my uh, my watermelons and so let me show you a few more so here's two right here is it those are really nice ones and here's another one I think that one's about to fall off it looked like it's turning yellow and that one as well looked like it's turning yellow maybe it didn't get pollinated so anyway guys that is what the watermelon looks like and let me show you the reservoir uh, I did refill as I mentioned oh there's another fruit right over there so so right now the Sun is not out yet so the pump is not running you see those film right there so without the the, the, the pump running I sort of like get this film right here and um, when the pump is on it actually looks better and everything looks nice and clear but look at the root system so uh, it is a pretty much a forget it or set it and forget it system but actually now it's no longer set and forget because it's so hot every few days I have to check and then I have to refill because if I don't then the plant would just run out of water and so uh, it's uh, it's still better than uh, you know growing it in the ground because if I grow it in the ground I basically have to water every day because the, gr the ground just just like dries up and uh, you know it required constant watering so I you know growing this method uh, you still save a ton of water okay welcome back we are now on day number 64 and the watermelon is doing amazing we have three fruits that I found that I have gotten big got fully pollinated and are growing very very well and I feel I found a few smaller ones that are starting to come up so let's take a look so here this is the big one right here you see that man that is so cool and uh, you see this mesh bag right here this is to uh, protect the rabbits from eating these so hopefully uh, that will deter them so that's the biggest one I have and I have a few smaller ones uh, these are all dead right here so those are they're gone but we have see this here I think I might have to cut this one off because we have three already that are pretty big see there's one right here and so I, I place them in a cup like this to scare the rabbits from eating them and then here's another one over here that one's pretty good size as well and I, I have a few more that are that just started to uh, to form and I think those uh, we're just gonna cut these off because we don't need any more uh, usually you would just want around one to two watermelons per vine and that should be good because that way um, all the energy can be uh, evenly distributed to uh, the two watermelons and it will get bigger and so uh, see they just crawling everywhere and uh, look there's another one right here and uh, growing these uh, in this type of method is actually pretty easy 
because the you know you just have to monitor the water every few days because the plants are just getting big now they're all over the place and so i think um every uh, five to six days i have to come here and check on the water you see and then refill and again at this point all i'm using is uh the bloom series and uh, i i quit the the grow series because they they're in blooming stage and so uh, a little bit of uh cow mag also will help with the fruiting process and so that's it very very simple uh, you start out with with grow and then once they start to flower then you switch over to the bloom and again it's it's f the the five milliliter a uh, scoop per gallon of water usually uh, you can always go less so um as you refill you don't have to always go five milliliter per gallon or you don't have to put like you know however many many gallons there are in there so just kind of gauge it and <laughs> just just do it on your own and that you know that's how i did i did i didn't really measure so i i don't know how much is left at at certain times and then i just you know fill it to the top and sometimes it could be you know it need 10 gallon and sometimes it could need five but i'll just put like five scoops and i'll fill it up with 10 gallons or something like that but anyway it's still a lot easier to grow um in this way than in in soil because in soil i literally have to come out and water every day or put it on a drip system or something but for this i just leave it for like five six days sometimes seven depending on how hot it is and uh, just refill whenever it's low and adding that air stone is a lifesaver because sometimes we get rain right after i refill and with that uh, air stone it does help with uh, the aeration in in the bucket so that that helped a little bit but uh that is it guys i hope you try this out so it's pretty awesome um and uh, it's really really easy and uh, it uh, i think it does take a lot less water then grow it in soil so that's it thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe